talk about how to display your shelves. Are you ready? So I think um, what we've kind of thought about first was um, the map, the layout of your store, and then figuring out where you're going to put some feature areas. But now we need to kind of think about the nitty gritty of the store shelves um, and how to best display those. So kind of like I was mentioning to you when I went in the grocery store and saw how they had the Tide and um, all of the detergents kind of displayed, that's something that you really can think about even with kind of those mundane things is still making them look organized and nice and there are best practices for how to display your shelves. So I've given you some examples here um, of vertical merchandising, horizontal merchandising, and then kind of a combination of the two. Um, with the bread and the cakes. So you can see kind of the difference, I think, really easily in how these appear to the customer and how, um, how you can make them look kind of interesting. Um, so something to think about is that um, your retail space on your shelves is very efficient. It's a great salesperson, like we talked about, so we really want to optimize it um, as best we can, even if it is just, um, I don't know, selling candy bars or something very kind of simple, we still want to make it look appealing because that's just going to add another element to your store that's appealing to your customer. So the feature areas are one thing that kind of set the mood and get them excited, but if then they walk behind the feature areas and it's just kind of a disarray of candy and whatever, they're, they're going to lose that feeling really quickly and walk out. So we still want to maintain um, this area or this thought of visual merchandising on even the simplest of shelves, okay? Um, still continuing to tell a story using props, signs, colors, and lighting. Telling that story, I think, in some of these things can be um, a, a very easy color story and just thinking about how you're laying things out with color. It could be telling a story of, this is my candy area, and what does that look like, and how can you create that to be a little more interesting? Can you add some sort of interesting prop to your candy area to grab their attention and get some excitement going? Um, you want to have signs. Signs not only are very practical in terms of giving like the price, but signs can give you another element of mood. So a sign could be something funny that tells a joke that kind of relates to the product. A sign could be how to use it. Um, let's say you have some local spice blend or something like that that you've gotten and you want to put um, that on display. Don't just put it on display and tell them it's $5. Put it on display and show them how to use it. Put that spice blend with a recipe of how to use it. Give them some ideas. Put it next to a nice, um, I don't know, plate or something that they're going to use when they cook with that spice blend. So think about telling that little story even on something very simple as like a food item. And that's, again, mixing in those add-on sales. So if I'm going to use my spice blend example, which is kind of silly. I don't know why I thought about that. But um, you know, if you're selling something like that, Tell them a story, tell them how to use it, and then give them the products that they need to go with it, to use it, because that's going to add on the sale. They're not only going to buy the spices, but they're going to add, they're going to buy the plates and napkins that they need to go with it. So think about those things. All right, so in merchandising the shelf, the vertical product lineups are the best to create excitement. So the vertical lineup, you can see there, they're showing the same stuff on every shelf but they're doing it in a way that's really interesting and catching the eye. So it's repetitive um, and it makes a statement, but they're doing it this way with the products versus the horizontal where it's this way. What, what tends to happen with the horizontal is someone will look at, look at it and their eye kind of assumes that they know what's there in the um, horizontal layout. So they might not really look at it. They might not spend time because it's a little bit too easy on the eye and it's just gonna, they're just gonna take a quick glance and keep moving, where the vertical is telling a little bit more of a story and it's making them look a little bit harder at what's there, and so they're spending a little more time there. So that's something that you really wanna think about when you're um, laying out your shelves. You also wanna think about color blocking. So what I mean by color blocking is, you know, that you can see on the vertical shelf, all the blue things are in a line, all the red things, then the navy, and then they go back to red. So they're doing, that very purposefully and that was something that I really saw when I went in the store and saw the detergent there was orange tide there was white all and then there was yellow arm and hammer and they really did that very strategically even though it was the same product all the way on this whole huge wall 
it was laid out in a really interesting way that kept my eye kind of focused and looking, what else do they have? What else do they have? What else am I missing? So think about those things when you're doing a shelf. Um, let's see. Yeah, so horizontal is just the least desirable. Sometimes it's necessary to do things horizontally. I mean, grocery stores do that all the time, but just think about that when you're creating the shelf, what makes most sense for you and how can you implement some of these lineups into your shelves. The other thing that I like to say is making sure to keep it clean. Um, so clean meaning not just physically clean, like dust free and stuff like that, but clean in terms of clean lines. So making sure things line up correctly, um, that's very important in the vertical um, shelf layout is that vertical line needs to be a vertical line. It can't be kind of, you know, willy-nilly back and forth. It needs to be clean. So clean lines are very important. Products need to be labeled facing front very much the same each time so that it looks visually clean. So does that make sense? I'm not talking necessarily about dirt. <laughs> I'm talking about a clean look and keeping things even, keeping things facing front, keeping them um, pulled to the front of the shelf so things are selling out, not having a bunch of things in the back of the shelf, always keeping them pulled to the front is very important on the shelf. Okay, so here are some examples just showing real merchandise in the different layouts, the horizontal, the vertical, and showing a pyramid. So a pyramid is used more often in um, a feature display, but that just kind of gives you the shapes and the lines that we're talking about looking at in the displays. You can see the cups, the white cups on the left, that's more of a horizontal display. Everything's kind of the same uniform. It does add some visual interest because they have kind of mixed things up a little bit, so that is a very easy way to still keep interest, keep the customer's eye kind of moving through the display. The center, they're doing vertical, so you can see how the shapes are lining up very vertically and that's just really simple food items it's very clean it's very organized it does have the signs to show you the price so you do have some very efficient ways of using your shelf space but it looks very clean and it creates nice lines for the eye and then the pyramid so thinking if you have a shelf where you're doing more of a feature area keeping a pyramid shape that's going on there is very pleasing to the eye they constantly have these up and downs and left to rights so those are just some examples of how you can use those shapes and lines. Okay, I'm gonna get very design school on you for a minute here. Um, these are the elements of design, okay? These cross all areas of design. So they are visual merchandising elements. They're um, elements for Clothing designers, I mean, they, these cross any kind of design that you're going to want to use, so it's just kind of a very basic primer on what things make up a good design. So we talked about lines, that's the first thing. So always thinking about what's your line. Is it vertical? Is it horizontal? Is it diagonal? Make sure there's a clear line. We don't want a whole bunch of squiggles and messy. We want clean, precise lines. That's what's going to make the store look appealing to the customer, so the clean lines. Shapes, again, square, circle, pyramid, those are the shapes. Pyramid is very great for merchandising, especially in feature areas. That pyramid shape is really gonna help you, so always be thinking about how you can create that, meaning put a big item, big tall item in the back, smaller, shorter items in the front. Creating that pyramid, or left to right, you know, you can have tall things in the middle and then go to shorter on the outside. Those are gonna create pleasing things. I think this um, image that I showed, I really like because it kind of, kind of shows you all these elements in one picture. It shows you the pyramid, it shows you the different lines, it shows you how they're creating the color story. It's a super simple image, but it really depicts all of the elements that we're talking about here. So that's a really great thing to think about when you're making displays and you could easily see how that could even be the base of display. They have little different boxes and you could be putting product on top of each of those boxes and in front of each of those boxes and coordinated, coordinating it by color, just the way they've done that. So it's kind of like a cheat sheet of how to create a feature display. Direction, so thinking about direction in your display, um, we kind of talked about this, but up, down, front, back, side to side. So a display doesn't always have to be uniform in a straight line or a straight line. It can be these ups and downs, these lifts and levels. I think that's very important to 
um, keep interest and keep things flowing in your displays, and then keeping size in mind. So large things generally should be in the back or on the bottom of the display, and then shorter things go on um, the front or the top. So that's just a general rule of thumb. Things you'll have to play with when you actually look at making the display and using some balance um, in your display, but just in general, those are kind of the things that you want to think about. Also want to think about texture, rough and smooth. So if, let's see, I'm going to go back, I think, here. Yeah. I'm going to go back a second. You can see how they even use some texture here in the display with the white cups. They've put that on wooden shelves, so you've got a um, contrast of texture. They've got a lot of smooth glassware, but then they've broken it up with a wooden shelf to give you a little bit of texture. And they've even created texture in the fact that they're using uh, opaque white versus clear um, see-through glasses. They could have, I'm sure, there's other glasses in this store, and I'm sure they could have made a whole display of just opaque white but they chose not to. They chose to break it up with those clear glasses because that gave some te visual texture to the display. So something to think about there is how they're doing that. That's very strategic in the way that they're making the textures mix. So um, the other thing, I kind of created this little mock display up here, but I also played with texture. I didn't want to just have um, a white basket and another matching white basket. I specifically chose a wooden basket to kind of add that texture. I put plants in to add some more texture. I think those are really easy cheats you can do. Just putting a plant somewhere or putting a wood, wooden element next to a smooth element, those kind of create nice texture and balance in the displays. And then color grouping. So there's different ways to group colors, I'm sure you know, but it's something to think about if you have a lot of colors, how are you displaying them? Are the t-shirts displayed with a whole bunch of red and then yellow and then something. I mean, like, think about how you're grouping them. Group them purposefully with color. So if you have, let's say, you're low on inventory and you have a whole bunch of mix of t-shirts kind of at the end of the season, how, there's still a way to merchandise those in a way that looks nice. For example, grab the red and the orange that are complementary colors and put those together because that'll look really nice. Grab the greens and the blues and put those next to each other because that will be really nice. So even if they're mismatched, you can think about how to group them in a color story that will make them look a little bit more appealing rather than having a shelf of red, black, green, yellow. Like just think about purposely arranging those colors of mismatched things in a way that will look a little more appealing and a little bit more like they were meant to be, not like they were just leftovers that you can't get rid of, okay? I'm going to just keep talking to you about the pyramid principle because it's so important and it's so easy to do. It also takes advantage of height, which I think a lot of times gets forgotten in displays. Make sure to go up with your displays. Make sure to take advantage of all the height. It doesn't need to be something that's just counter level. It can go very high to very low. Um, and all these things do that and they do it in a way where your eye starts up top and goes down. And it could be even from the back of the store to the front of the store. So in the example on the left, the pyramid is starting in the back of the store with that big display in the back, which is in and of itself a big pyramid. But then it also comes forward because they have a table kind of set to the front of that that kind of ends the bottom of the pyramid for you. So they're directing you from the back of the store with the top high items all the way to the front of the store with the table with the lower big items, so you can see that pyramid taking place. And in the middle picture, they're using multiple pyramids to show you. They have kind of like a shelving system in the center, which is kind of the top of the pyramid. And then on either side, the left or the right, they've created two more pyramids. So that's giving them a lot of space up top and down below, but they're always bringing your eye from back to front, from top to bottom with that pyramid. And then the one um, off to the other side is a very, very straightforward pyramid where they've just stacked their shelving in such a way that it's going, you know, from top to bottom in the pyramid. A really easy way to create the pyramid is using the rule of three. So we usually, in design, talk about the rule of three or the rule of odd numbers. 
Odd numbers are going to be more pleasing to the eye and to the customer and to keep the movement going than even numbers. So keep that in mind when you're displaying something, especially on a feature or a focus area. Try to group things in threes or fives, not twos or fours. It just is um, been proven to be much more interesting and much more visually pleasing to do that. So this is a good example of how they're using the rule of three. You can see the little mannequins on the left. They're using the rule of three. They're going from left to right, so they kind of have that diagonal or half pyramid example right there. The center, again, they have, I think those are blankets, but they're showing them in sections of three. Then on the side, they have some more pillows that are in threes. The candles are in threes. They're also in pyramids. You can just see how over and over and over again, they're using these groupings of three and kind of this pyramid diagonal line to create the display and um, the visual focus. Okay, so we talked about the elements of design. Now we're gonna talk about the principles of design. These are things that um, just will help you when you're trying to lay something out visually, figure out what's best and how to do that. The first thing is proximity. So you can see that um, the lines on the left, there are black circles and yellow circles, but then on the right, there are also black and yellow, but they've grouped them a little bit more bright proximity so you can kind of, your eye kind of goes back and forth between the yellow and the black in the second example. So it's distributing the color a little bit differently and you can do that um, with your merchandise. So potentially you have uh, candy bars. It's gonna be much more interesting for the customer if instead of like on the, um, the example on the left, instead of having all your blue boxes on one side and all your red boxes on the other, if you do something more like on the right, where you have a couple blue, one red, a couple red, one blue, you kind of mix them up, but you're still keeping that very straight focused color grouping. You're not going red, blue, yellow, green, da 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 da. You're, you're focused on two, and you're keeping them in proximity to each other, and you're kind of mixing them a little bit. So when we're talking about like the horizontal shelf example that I gave you, proximity is a really great um, principle to use when you're doing something like that. So you're thinking first, okay, I'm gonna make this a horizontal shelf or a vertical, rather, a vertical shelf, and I'm gonna use proximity. I'm gonna put a couple blue boxes here, a couple yellow here, a couple blue here, a couple yellow there, and you're kind of mixing those things together. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, okay, balance. Balance is another principle. So you can see by the rocks and the formation that they've done, they're not exactly the same, they're not equal, they're not um, identical items, but they're balanced. When you're looking at that, you're seeing the balance. You're seeing the fact that they took a giant circle rock on one side and they balanced it with three smaller rocks on the other side. So always thinking about that in your displays. We don't want things lopsided or unbalanced. We wanna have things kind of play off of each other and counterbalance so that if you have a really giant element in your display, how are you gonna balance that out on the other side? You're gonna put maybe three smaller to medium-sized items to kind of also balance the eye and not have just a whole bunch of one, two, three giant items. Maybe one giant item, a couple medium and small items. So just keeping that balance in mind is really important, especially, especially when you're doing a feature display. I would say balance is kind of the key to remember so that you're not just um, overpowering with one big item, or vice versa, let's not have one giant item and one really, really small item. Let's kind of mix it up with a small, medium, and large so that we feel like we have things balanced. Okay, alignment. Alignment is something that comes into play, I think, in a lot of different areas. It can come in with your um, floor map, like aligning things, so making sure aisles are aligned, walkways are aligned making sure that there is equal balanced space in the floor map. Alignment also comes into play when you're merchandising a shelf. So when you're putting things on a shelf and you're thinking about, are they vertically aligned? Are they horizontally aligned? How are these things aligned? That just makes it easier on the customer to look at the merchandise and clearly, visually um, assess what's on the shelf. So alignment is really, really important to keep in mind. Okay, there are three more principles. Repetition, so you can see with the glass bottles how they've done some repetition here. They've chosen 
to have some lime green bottles and some kind of clearish green bottles, but they re repeated the pattern on their shelving. That's a very interesting way that they've done their shelving. It's a lot of the same merchandise and it's repeated, but it's repeated strategically in the way that they've done each shelf, okay? So that's a really interesting method that I think applies to when you're doing shelves um, is a repetition and making sure that you're keeping things repeated. It makes much more of an impact when something is repeated versus just having one. If you want to have groups of three, groups of five, groups of um, odd numbers, that repetition keeps the eye moving and keeps um, makes a statement in what you're doing. Contrast. Contrast you can see here by um, A, they've used the rule of three in their vases, but they've also done some contrast by adding that organic flower element. Those vases would be much less interesting if they did not have that one little branch floating through the middle. It kind of cuts up the lines. It kind of adds that texture that we need. So that contrast of smooth and organic is really important and really makes the impact of that whole statement. So very simple three displays, but it makes a, such a difference having just that one little branch in there. So keeping in mind how you can just plop in a little contrast makes a big difference. Okay, space. I like this um, <laughs> because it's showing how they're using the shelves and how they're displaying. This happens to be um, a lot of books, but they're not, it's not, it's not wall to wall books. They purposely implemented space into the shelving because it looks more orderly, things are more aligned, things are more visually pleasing rather than having books butted up against books against books against books. They've done some books, they've left a little space, they put an organic element. Then they've, on the opposite side, put another row of books, I'm going from the top down. On the opposite side, they've done some books, they've left some space, they put an interesting item at the end of those books. The middle shelf, books on one side, space in the middle, books on the other. The bottom, it's kind of the same. It's a repetition on the two bottom shelves of the same items repeated, but they've laid them out in a linear fashion, leaving space between them. That space is so important. If you can handle even just an inch of space between products on a shelf, it makes them much more appealing and seem much more expensive to the customer. So leaving that space and not just having everything jam-packed on the shelf is really, really important. Okay, and talk about colors. Because I think colors are super important to the way that you can tell a story, the way that you can set a mood, the way that you can just make people focus on something, colors really speak to us. So paying attention to the colors that you're using um, gave you this color wheel. And really the point is that you can kind of use the color wheel to come up with color stories that work well together very easily. So we're seeing that, you know, you could make a display that's all warm colors, a display that's cool colors. Do you know what I mean by that? Warm being red, blue being cool. Um, and just focusing, I like to usually try to limit, I think, especially when you're starting, to try to figure out how to make a great display. Limit your colors to maybe three at the most, two or three. I think that is very impactful. When you start to get four, five, six colors, you sort of lose the impact of what is your story. So try to think about, okay, what colors am I gonna choose? How am I gonna make an impact? What am I gonna really focus on? And also think about, um, are there colors that stand out versus colors that fade into the background? So for example, you know, a gray or a tan or something very basic might fade into the background, so you could use that as some of your kind of base products, but then you really want to highlight a blue and a black. You know, those are gonna really pop and be the focus colors for your display. So what I'm thinking about here is, let's say you want to do a display that is um, very, um, very, very impactful visually. So we're gonna use yellow and we're gonna use red, okay? They're across, the way from each other on the color wheel. They're kind of opposites. They're a little bit to the side, but that's what you're going to focus on. So make a display using your red and yellow t-shirts. Grab in any red and yellow um, food items you have. Grab in some red and yellow umbrellas or red and yellow beach towels. Just grab those things and just make a little 
focus area just purely based on color. You can have potentially some grays or some base colors in there that really don't grab the attention, but keep the attention on the red and yellow, for example. So really think about that when you're doing especially your focus areas, but also on your shelving. You know, kind of, if you can, align things in a way that makes sense color-wise and try to stick to two, maybe three colors when you're doing a focus area. Don't overwhelm the eye because then it just is diluted and you haven't made the impact of the statement that you meant to make. I left you a little worksheet again. Um, I'm not gonna take a break right now because we're gonna break for lunch in a little bit, but I do want you to just think about, okay, what colors can I focus on? What makes sense? I mean, some very basic things might be around the 4th of July, red, white, and blue, color story, bam, done. Uh, we're gonna do a beginning of summer color story. So maybe you focus on hot colors that are red, yellow, orange, bright pink, cheery colors. I mean, think about those things and think about the, how that's, those color stories can even just direct the time of year and what change outs you're going to make in your displays. Color is a really easy way to make impact because it doesn't matter necessarily what the merchandise is. It matters more that you're telling a story with the color and you're grabbing the attention of the customer just, just purely through that color. And you can kind of mix and match different merchandise in a display just purely based on the fact that it has a color story to it. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the actual inside of the store. I really want to make sure that we pay attention to the outside of the store as well and create some curb appeal. It's really, really important that the person even comes into your store. Why are they going to come into your store if it doesn't look appealing from the outside? So it's very simple, I think, way to make an impact and to grab their attention is to have some curb appeal. So that means paying some attention to your front door giving it a little bit of love, right? Thinking about, you know, telling them that story again, telling them that story of why they want to come into your store. A, I hope it has a sign telling them that it is a store and that they should come in. Um, but it also could have a theme. So this example, they've got a couple of pumpkins, so maybe it's a um, Halloween or a fall theme. They put a lot of plants out front. I think that's very inviting always to have some plants to kind of welcome them. Those two things, putting those pumpkins and putting those plants out there, are also easy things that you can change up seasonally. I mean, there's nothing to say that we couldn't just remove those pumpkins and um, put a couple umbrellas in the plant when it becomes summer or spring season. We could be changing out those plants or adding in some flowers or some um, pinwheels of color or something like that. It's very easy to change those things up and give someone a feeling of, oh, they've got something new in there. I want to go see what's happening. They've got something special. So definitely thinking about the outside of your store. I also like the fact that they put some lights. Um, there's some little string lights above the sign. So that also kind of, kind of twinkles and makes them want to come in. And when it's evening, they have a nice light lighting up the sign, telling them that you're still open and that you want them to come in. It's just very inviting, telling people, please come in. Please see what I have. So I put a little list on the side of things that I would think about when thinking about what's my curb appeal. I would think about, okay, can I use a garland of some sort? Could I even use a curtain maybe to give a pop of color? Um, you know, a curtain could just be swayed to the side as just a colorful element telling them to come in. You use flowers and plants always. That's just a nice welcoming thing to do. A bench, maybe just a bench so they can have a seat. Maybe a bench is there for color. Maybe a bench has a prop on it. Who knows what that bench is doing, but I think it can serve multiple purposes for you. Um, chairs as well. Thinking about having a sign and a welcome mat, just like you would at your house, welcoming them into the store. Maybe saying something cute about the season or, or something funny that you do at your campground. And then paint. Paint is also a really easy way to add appeal by painting the door, painting the fence. If they have stairs, painting the stairs. Just making that little bit of color pop from the front entrance makes a huge difference and tells people that you've got a great store that has exciting things inside. Here's a couple other examples of some curb appeal um, front, door, front doors that I really liked. And again, I think the main thing that I saw when I looked at all of these was they were paying attention to signs, 
They all told me what they were. They all used, used paint to have some nice appealing color. And they all used some sort of prop or plant. So I think that's something that um, I found is kind of the common theme with all of them, even though they all look really different too. I think, um, you know, the one on the left is a kind of a brick store, but it's still showing you that um, they want you to come in. They have their door open. They have a sign telling you what they offer. They have a little wheelbarrow full of colorful, colorful plants. So they're really giving you that feeling of like, come over here, check me out, see what I've got going on. You really want to go in that store. The top is kind of more of a wooden, I don't know, barn type store, I guess. But again, they're doing the same thing. They're having colorful plants outside. They have a nice sign. They have something off to the left that is painted bright yellow. It's kind of like a cart of some sort. But they, they kind of made that into even like a little feature area for them. So that could be changed up seasonally, I guess. And I think that's a really nice element that they've taken. And then the camp store on the bottom, they've used the same kind of elements. It's totally different. It's much cleaner, more streamlined approach to what they're doing, but they've still done the same thing. They still have signs, they have hanging plants, they have potted plants, they have some seating um, off to the side so that people can kind of hang out and, and gather there. So I think that they're really paying attention. They have a great um, stairway just telling you, like, come in, come walk up here and see what we've got. I think these also are some nice images. I really liked on the left how they painted that door green. It's just that extra little element. Very cost effective to just paint a door green, but it really makes a visual impact. I mean, imagine the difference if this store had a barn wood door just like the rest of the building. Not as exciting, not as enticing to make me want to come in, but that green door says there's something interesting in there. I want to go check it out. And then they've done some little signs off to the side where uh, you know, they could be pertaining to the culture of the camp, they could be little jokes, they could just be telling you what they have inside, but they've made an attempt to make it interesting and give you something to look at and to um, give you some, some reason to want to go check out what they're saying on the side of the building. They've also put a little bench there so you can sit and gather. And then on the right, they've done um, more of like a window box. I think that's really great because they just told you a story in that simple little window box with that bicycle. They're telling you it's spring. They're telling you we're gonna go outside and have a fun bike ride. They're telling you that there's, um, there's birds that we can watch and we can listen to sing by the birdhouse. I mean, they're just telling such a great story and all they've done is plopped a bicycle with some plants, you know, under the windowsill. <laughs> it's just a very, very simple thing. It looks neat and clean. The paint is nice and white. It's just bright and cheery. I just love how they did that. I think it's so, so simple and it just makes me want to go see what they have inside of that store. Um, I've put a few more images here of don't underestimate the door. So we've talked about that curb appeal, but once they've gotten up to your door, really, really, really make sure that your door is exciting and it makes them want to come in. Your door, these are house doors, so your door may not be as traditional as some of these, but I think they get the point across where they've got an interesting color of paint on their door. They each told a story to us of what's going on at that time of year or what you're focused on in your campground at that time. So on the left, they've made a nautical theme. I think that's really cute. They've added, you know, the kind of color story of the ocean, the blues and the greens. They've contrasted that with bright white and then they put a nice um, decoration on the door that goes along with that beach nautical theme and they could put a couple props off to the side which are the, um, the, the floaties and all those things. They've also got that seating. They've got two nice seats there so that people can sit and gather and just feel like they're welcome to come there. The middle is showing a little bit of a spring story. So again, lighter blues. They've got a nice floor mat that's welcoming, adding a pop of color, a really inexpensive way to add some color to a floor mat. And then they've used their plants as well to kind of really hit home with that light blue and green color story. I think the door on the right does a great job of telling you, hey, it's spring. You know, this is what this is the season, this is what we're focused on. They've done some really simple things like paint the door yellow, add a wreath, and then make some planters with some umbrellas. I think that really makes an impact. It tells me a story. 
and it makes me really want to go in and see what else is going on in the store. So I would, if I were to focus on some of these doors, now that I've brought them to my front door, I want to bring them inside, potentially the first feature area they see should maybe also relate to what you just told them. So if you're telling them it's spring by your front door, when they walk in, you should have a feature area that's now welcome spring and, I don't know, butterflies and spring colors, not 4th of July, right? They have to still interact your front door versus what's inside your store. But I think that, um, you know, using plants, using some simple props, using a doormat, all those things are pretty inexpensive and can be changed out really easily. And I think that really can make a big difference to having people even stop by your store. Um, again, just a couple simple, simple vignettes or stories they've told at a front door. They've put a couple pumpkins in a basket. They've added a welcome sign. There's not a really lot of elements going on on the left, but it is telling a story and it is saying, welcome, come in. So I think just paying that little extra attention to those things are interesting. I also think what they did on the right was kind of... Um, Kind of interesting because they've just taken blank picture frames and painted them and arranged them in an appealing way and kind of used them to frame out the front door of a plant. So there's really not a lot going on there, not very difficult to um, attain what they've done, but it does tell a story. It's easy to change out for seasons or colors, and it just kind of adds that visual interest to your front door versus like maybe having a wreath or something. So what to use and when to change it. We've kind of talked about this and maybe you guys have some other thoughts about um, what makes sense for your store, but depending on your season, I guess I would really think seasonally about, okay, is there something we can do um, if you're just opening for the summer season, like welcoming people back for the summer and, and this is what we're gonna focus on. So having that kind of welcome first glance of summer Maybe door, maybe you have a mid-summer door that focuses on 4th of July or some activity. I know there's a campground that has Christmas in July. So they would have, obviously, maybe a Christmas door or Christmas theme at that time. And then maybe there's more things that go into the fall or to Halloween or something like that. So just thinking about, okay, I'm going to focus on my curb, appeal, my curb appeal at my front door. What makes sense? You know, you're not going to paint your door every time but you could paint it a color that you could then easily change up with your one, two, or three times a year that you're gonna change that door. So be thinking about that and be planning. This is part of that planning again. Planning how and when you're gonna change these feature areas. The door is a feature area, so don't let that slip by. That's a really easy way to utilize space, tell a story, attract the customer, and it's the door. And hopefully you have some space outside of your door that you can also use now to tell that story. So you could put some planters, you could put some chairs, you could maybe even put um, you know, some props or some interesting merchandise just to get them in without taking up, we didn't take up any floor space now because we're outside, right? So we have to think about that as being the first place that we're using a feature area to get them in, in the door. The door is the way to get them in. Okay, so now, we also hopefully have some windows to work with. The windows are also a great area to make a feature display and tell a story. So just like we told a story at the door, we're telling a story at the window. And we're doing that through not only showing merchandise, but showing props as well. So I thought these were kind of some very interesting and contrasting windows. One tells me kind of a spring-summer story, one tells me a winter story, and they're both doing a little bit different, um, different techniques. The spring-summer window is using props and themes to tell me a story, but it's also showing me merchandise. So I think that was kind of a very um, nice way to do double duty. You know, tell that story, use the props, they're giving you um, a sign, it's a Mother's Day event that they're promoting. So they're telling you that, and then they're probably showing you some gift ideas that they think would be great as Mother's Day gifts. So without even someone coming into that store, they can already see something that potentially they need. 
you know, they might need a gift for Mother's Day and look, it's right here and they didn't even go in the store. So think about how you can use those windows to gather even more attention and to eat, hopefully get them in the store but by showing them what you have to offer and in a thematic way for seasons or for whatever um, merchandise you're trying to promote. The second window, um, they do have some merchandise in that window. It's just not as um, front and center as the other window. It's really about telling them a story. They're telling us a story about winter, about ice skating. And then they're also trying to sell us some sweaters and some things that we potentially would wear. So they've got you in that mood of needing a sweater, right? Because they're telling you it's cold and you're going to be outside ice skating. And here's some great warm, fuzzy sweaters. So there's two different ways to do that. And I think your store, I don't know, we, you would have to think about what, what your windows are, you, what they look like. How visible are they to the customer outside to see what makes most sense? And then how do you want to use them? Do you want to use them to promote merchandise? Does it make sense? Or do you want to just use them to tell a story and to get them to come in a little bit more? The other thing that I think you should look at and pay attention about these two windows is the one on the left where they've done the Mother's Day display, you can see through that window to what's inside the store. So now you're not only showing them the display that they're focused on in the front of the window, but you're also giving them a chance to look into the window farther. So maybe on the sides of that window or just behind that display, they might have a continuation of what they've shown you in the window so that now you've got double duty, you've shown them a display in the window and they can look through and see what's behind that to see the secondary display or the back of that display to see more of what you have. Where the one on the right is just setting a mood, it's telling a story and it is showing a little merchandise but you can't see in that window to what's in that store. So that could be a good thing because that could create some intrigue and that could make them really interested to go in and see what's behind that window. But just two things to think about is, are your windows going to be open and visible to what the rest of the store looks like or are they going to block off and just tell a story? Neither is, neither is really right or wrong. They're just a different choice in how you choose um, to use that window space. But don't forget that window space is usable and it is very important. I would say the biggest thing to think about when you're doing a window display is um, making kind of an impact. So using bigger items, more colorful items, big signs. Um, we want to make sure that from a distance, people can actually make out what it is. People can see what it is. Little tiny objects are not going to make any impact. They're not going to grab attention. So we want to kind of scale things up to the window and then test that test that theory, you know, put something in there, go out from where someone on the street would be looking in the window and make sure they can see it, make sure it makes that impact. You do have the glare, obviously, to contend with, so that's something to think about, but making sure that it's within scale and that it's visible uh, makes sense so that you're not wasting that space, you're actually utilizing it as um, a display or some advertisement or something like that. Uh, the check boxes that are to the side of this are just kind of thought, thought bubbles I had about things that you would want to think about or keep in mind when you're doing a window. So maybe think about using some garland and lights. You can see that on the display on the left, they have used both the garland and the lights to kind of frame out the top of the display. Um, flower boxes are a great thing to put in a window, um, as you could see on the previous slide. Yeah, where is it? There. So a flower box, that's a really easy way to make a window display um, in a window that doesn't really have an area to do displays. They've just attached it to the outside. So something to think about. I think as with what we talked about with the door, painting the door a simple color, painting the window trim also is, makes a nice impact. And so think about the combination. Are they near each other? Are they far away from each other? So we don't want to have a door and a window right next to each other and they're painted just clashing colors that don't make any sense, so make sure to think that through. If you are using paint, you're telling a color story there. I think a window needs to be pretty simple, so if you're doing a theme, keep it pretty simple. We don't want it overcrowded. We do want it very visually appealing, neat, clean lines, and um, not just showing everything you have. It should really be focused on one thing, right? You don't have a lot of space in the window, so we don't need to tell them everything. We just need to tell them one important thing that we want them to focus on, and then we can tell the rest of the, rest of the story when they come inside. 
He talked about the fact that you could make them see through or not see through. That's something that you just can think about. When you're working on it, make sure to step away and look at it. So work on the window a little bit, step back, make sure it's making sense, make sure it's visible, and then keep working. We don't want you to have finished a display and then go outside and realize nobody can see it. So as you're working on it, take a stop, take a step back, look at it, make sure it makes sense. Um, I think color is a huge part of the window display. So the colors you choose are really gonna bring them in. I really like on the left how they've used the red, the yellow, the orange, really to set um, a color story and be exciting. So that is something that's gonna wanna make someone come inside. They've used a color story on the right as well. It's just a little more calming. It's the white and the tans and a little bit of the blues, so they're telling that winter cold color story, but they're both telling a color story. And then um, the next thing to think about is the window is bringing the inside out or bringing the outside in. So what I mean by that is shown on the next page. So you can see on the lower right corner, that's a really interesting display where they've kind of they've kind of enticed you from the outside in and the inside out. So what they're selling, they're showing you on the window. That's a whole store full of floral printed items, and they've put the floral on the window, they put the floral in the window, and then they put the floral outside the window. So they're being consistent in those three steps of bring, bringing the outside in and the inside out. So they're really transitioning things in a way that makes sense to tell you what's in their store. Also the plants. So in the middle, I thought that was a great example of making a non-traditional window box. They just chose rain boots as their planter and filled them with flowers. That tells me a story, tells me that it's spring, tells me that there's gonna be water, it tells me that there's plants and color. All these things are just simple little things that are making a big impact to that window and they're mixing elements of outside and in. That store probably sells those rain boots. <laughs> so, you know, that, that really is telling a big story with just a few, um, few items. The, um, I think the one on the left with the balloons, I thought that was kind of interesting because they've chosen now to block. You can't see what's in their store, but I think you have a good idea of what's in their store. It's probably some party supplies. It's probably something to do with entertaining, having a good time. Um, their, their saying says really, really good things are coming. Um, they're probably under construction, but it could be a really interesting way to tell a story in a simple way, just balloons that's giving a color story, that's setting a mood, that's doing something um, exciting to tell the customer, hey, come in and take a peek, okay? So I think those are really interesting. So we're gonna take a quick, let's say five, 10 minutes, and I want you guys to go back and think about your door, your curb appeal, and your windows, what you can do in those areas, and then if you have challenges or questions, we can walk through some of that together. Does that sound good? Okay. All right, thank you guys for telling me a little bit more about your doors and your windows. And if there are other things we can talk about, um, I'd love to talk to, you, talk to you more about that. But I think it's really important to remember that, um, not to forget about the doors and windows, those are important places to tell stories and to gain attention and to even advertise your products or, or something that you want the customers to know. So remember that the doors and the windows are just as much a part of your store as the actual interior store. Okay, we're gonna just do a little bit of signage talk and then we'll take a lunch break. So, signs, this is the third element that I really want you to think about for the store. So we talked about layout, we talked about feature areas, and now we're talking about signs. So signage is a very, very important part of your displays and your store. Um, why? Because they're providing product information and suggestions of purchase. They're directing them to locations in the store. So if you have a department for food, if you have a department for clothes, if you have a department for um, boutique items, whatever those things are, those signs can be easily visible or should be easily visible at a glance through your store so that customers can easily see what you offer. Think about, um, you know, like a Home Depot or something. You can easily see, okay, aisle 8 is the screwdrivers, aisle 10 is the paint, 
those kind of things should apply to your store as well. So high up visual signs telling people where to find things is really important. And then you can use smaller signs in each display to tell them how much things cost, um, how they can use them, maybe something more about um, you know, who made the product or a little bit more product information that you need to give them. Um, another type of sign is a picture. So think about um, a landscape picture. That's setting a mood for your customer and telling another story. So a sign isn't just a word sign. A sign could be something that's actually a picture to help create the mood or to help set the tone for the display. So signage and graphics also help customers locate specific products and frequently used items in the stores. You can also use icons instead of words for your sign. So obviously you would have to use um, an icon that's easily recognizable, but you know everybody knows, I think nowadays, what the power button icon is. You know, something like that you might have, or a brand might have a specific icon that you could use as um, a sign or as a visual cue to, hey, we have this, um, this item in our store just by using their brand icon as a sign. Um, yeah, also with the icons, um, that helps in case you have people who don't speak the same language, the icon is a visual cue to them that tells them what you have without using um, language. So the example here, I really liked the signage that they used because it did a bunch of different things. It told me that they were selling me fresh, handmade soap, right? They gave me, um, you know, just basic information of what it was. They tell me that they have them wrapped up and ready to give, so they're telling me like a um, benefit of buying that soap is it's already wrapped and ready to give as a gift. So it's giving them a little bit more information of your customer service and what you're doing in the store. And then they're also telling me, um, they can give me a sample, let us cut you a piece. So they're telling me a lot of different things in a small area all about this soap. And then each soap stack individually has a little card above it that's telling me the price. It's probably telling me the scent of the soap. It's probably giving me a little bit more information just about how to use the soap or what, you know, what the scent or the flavor of the soap is. So I felt like, um, they did a lot of things with just a couple of signs and they kept it really consistent too. So all of the signs are this kind of black and white chalkboard with this handwritten message. So they very, they very consistently told a story to me about the soap using kind of the blackboard theme. They've arranged it in a nice color story and then they've told me how to use it, how it's made, what the price is, a lot of different things just with signs. Um, and you didn't have to have someone standing there necessarily telling them every single thing about the soap. They laid it out for you very clearly. This is handmade soap. It's fresh, we can cut you a piece. We've already wrapped it for you as a gift. Here's how much it costs, here's what the scents are. So they've done a lot of the sales work for you just with the signage. Okay, the, um, this, this example on the left with kind of like the rain boots and the outdoor gear, I think they've done an interesting job using their signage. You can see on the floor, they've set, a, they've set a picture, which sets a mood of being outdoors already. It's kind of telling you the theme of what they're trying to sell you. They're giving you a sign that has the brand, it's the Hunter brand boot. So they're giving you that in the center. This is the brand of the boot. And then they're setting the theme with, they have camping, they say beer tent, they have all these things on that little wooden sign. So again, kind of setting that mood, giving you that ambiance, telling you how, when, and where you would use those boots. You would use those boots to go camping. You would use those boots if you're gonna be in a beer tent getting your feet wet. Like all of these things are telling you why you need these boots without actually having to say anything to the customer. So I think they did a good job um, there trying to sell you those boots just through signage. They probably also, I'm assuming, have a price. And it looks like off to the left, they have a clipboard that's giving you some key features of the boot, so giving you kind of um, you know quality product identity items. It's not overwhelming either. It's just a couple little signs, but it's telling you a whole lot just with those three little, four little signs, I guess. Then the, um, the display on the right 
is topped off with a really great sign it's saying local favorites. You can even see behind that, this is a, happens to be a grocery store, but you can see behind that they have a sign again that's showing the things that are behind that. So just by looking at this one picture, I can tell, okay, they have some great local favorite foods right here, but then also in the back, they have whatever's in aisle three and they have some organics. So three visual signs, easily identifiable right away at one glance. That's something that you should probably think about when you're putting signs in your stores. Signs shouldn't be blocking your view. They should be telling you what we have and then also allowing you to see what's behind and behind and behind, right? Um, these local favorites, though, are also tagged with their prices. Just, you know, once underneath each item so you can see that. If I were to add anything to that, I would probably put some extra signs um, telling people how to use these things or maybe how they're made since they're local. I might want to tell them about, um, you know, who the craftsman or who the producer was that made them and why they're so um, special to the local people, why they're, why they're unique for that environment. So that is one thing that I thought about when I looked at this was, I think it's a great job, it's giving, it's giving the needed information, but it could go a step above and beyond by telling a little bit more backstory on the product. You know, why are they local? Where are they from? Who made them? How do you use them? What do people like to do with them? And then also, you know, maybe set a mood through a uh, picture or artwork. So if they're local favorites, where are they local to? Maybe an outline of the state that you're in or the place, the county that's local or an icon that's easily recognizable about the, the, the geography that we're talking about here. <coughs> and then I think one other thing is that Hopefully, and I don't know exactly, I can't tell everything that they're selling, but I'm hoping that with these local favorites, they're also telling people or giving people an opportunity to cross-sell. So for example, you know, if they have beverages there, I probably would have put maybe in front of the, the bottom left looks to be like water bottles or something, I probably would have put something there that had to do like cups or can coolers or something um, that would help me with those beverages. So I would do a little bit more of that in that display it was something to, to think about. They're, I think, missing maybe a couple opportunities there to give a little bit more of a story and to cross-sell some of those items. Okay. Just telling me we have to go lunch. <laughs> okay. Um, I, we'll pick up on the signs after.